brownish tan, there's some red. They're all different. Why aren't they all the same? Because gods can do that. God's like, look at this. There's a huge waterfall back there that never stops going. God is everywhere. And we just don't understand that somewhere. God is literally everywhere. Look under your seat. Look under your seat. God's presence is there. <laughs> Look up. God's presence is there. Look next to you. That's not God, but between you and that person, God's presence is there. <laughs> He's everywhere, y'all. And look at me. What we've got to understand is that's why it's important to have a relationship with God. Okay? I don't know anybody. Look, I mean, you can get some fancy paints, but I don't know anybody who can naturally make a leaf turn those colors. I don't know anyone who can make a waterfall like that keep going without any man-made powers, anything. I don't know anyone who can make rain in the spring turn to snow in the winter. I don't know anyone who can do that. And that's what's so cool is, like, is, the, is the creator of the universe who does all these things. It's not about just showing off. It's about showing up and saying, hey, you and you and you, I want a relationship with you. Okay? So here's the positive. So think about that. Psalm 139.7 says, Where can I go from your spirit? Or where can I flee from your presence? That's why I made you do that Don't look around there. He's everywhere. You can't go anywhere and God not be there. Okay? And I think we all have this. Some of us may have a secret sin that we do that we've never told anyone about. Our parents don't know about. Maybe our best friends don't even know about this. God knows. God knows the misbehaviors, he knows the good things, he knows the bad things, because he's everywhere. And do you ever think about that in your worship? Do you ever think about that in your worship, where like God has come into, like this morning, God came into this room, his presence is here, he's receiving praises, but some of us aren't praising. Can you imagine having a friend invite you, about, hey, hey, come over to my house, I want you to sit right here, Okay, we're going to hang out and then, and then your friend go off and just play video games for like eight hours and you're just sitting there sucking your thumb like nothing to do. And that sucked. How do you think God feels when he comes in for worship but we don't worship him? We don't engage him. And I'm not someone who says you got to raise your hands to worship But you've got to be focusing on God. You can't be looking around. you got to be focusing on what you're doing. Otherwise, you're leaving God sitting in a chair and neglected. And I don't think the creator of the universe deserves that. And then we get that, uh, that aspect of, you know, you, you can't see God, but he's always there. Have you ever felt him? Anyone ever gotten chill bumps in our worship before? For me, I just feel like that's the Holy Spirit just engaging, engaging me. Because I can be in the back, and I can, I can be singing, but... Because when I close my eyes and really focus on being in the presence of God, I just feel that warmth. As God said, hey, I'm here. Thank you for not wasting my time, Andrew. I appreciate your praise. And he appreciates your praise. And so I think the biggest, one of our biggest struggles, though, when we're transforming our thoughts is, is our prayers. Who's ever said God didn't answer my prayer? Who ever had God not answer our prayer? Wow, okay, okay. Anyone ever think God doesn't hear their prayers? Anyone ever think God doesn't hear my prayers? Okay, that's fair. I used to do the same thing. But in Job chapter 22, verse 27, it says, You will make your prayers to Him, and God, He will hear you. So if you make your prayers earnestly to God, He will hear them. That's a promise. Okay, so it's true. Going back to Philippians 4, 8, that's something true. So God hears our prayers when we're praying authentically. But here's my question to you. How do you pray? How do you pray? And I'm not necessarily talking about do you get on your knees, do you bow your head, you know, do you do you know, the finger thing, the church and steeple? I'm not talking about that, okay? Do you say, Lord, I want this? Or do you say, Lord, if you want this, Lord, I want this, or Lord, if you want this? I'm going to read off four verses to you to really hit this point. John 14, 13 says, And whatever you ask in my name, this is Jesus talking, that I will do that the Father may be glorified in the Son. The next verse says, If you ask anything in my name, 
In my name, I will do it. John 16, 23, whatever you ask the Father in my name, he will give to you. And 1 John 5, 14, now this is the confidence that we have in him, that if we ask anything, look at me, anything, if we ask anything according to his will, he hears us. Do you see the perspective shift? Do you hear the theme? If you're asking prayers up in God's will, it's going to happen. But we've got to be willing to say, God, your will is bigger than mine. God, your way is better than mine. God, your plan is more perfect than my plan. Okay? As we think about this, God's everywhere always. Okay? If you're taking notes, write that down. God is everywhere always. God is everywhere always. God is everywhere always. Okay? And so God hears our prayers. If we're authentically coming to God. If you're... If you're let me tell you some things that are, are not going to be effective prayers, okay? Laying on your pillow, you're in mid-drool, eyes closed, God, thank you for... That's not going to be an effective prayer, okay? You're going to wake up eight hours later and be like, amen. You know, it's just not, that's not going to be an effective prayer, okay? Eyes open, uh, I'm getting ready to take a test. Lord, I didn't study, please with me. Begin. Okay, that's not going to be an effective prayer. It's just not. But if you take some time, you know, you have an opportunity to spend some time in prayer this afternoon after this session. You take some time and really just close your eyes just so you can blot out distractions and say, God, I want to talk to you. And just be genuine. That's an earnest prayer. Okay? But asking above all else, that God, your will is going to be done. Anyone ever said the Lord's Prayer before? Our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done. Thy will be done. Not my will. Not thy will. Sometimes thy will be done. Okay, so look at me. If we're getting that perspective shift, like, God, I want a new car, but it's your will. God, I want a new Xbox, but it's your will. God, I want my parents to get back together, but it's your will. If we're asking those things, that's going to give us more contentment in the outcome and more trust that God knows what he's doing. Who would like that face? Knowing that God knows what he's doing. Yeah, that should be most of us, if not all of us. And so think about this, y'all. Your thoughts have power. Who, who would say that their home situation could be better? Let's not say bad. Who wishes their home situation was a little bit better? Okay, we're just being honest. That's one of us. Okay, I wish mine was. Okay? Who wishes, um, who wishes their friend situations were better? Who wishes they had better relationships with their friends? Okay? Yeah, me too. Um, who wishes they had a better relationship with their parents? Yeah, me too. Who wishes their parents had a better relationship with them? Yeah, me too. And see, what we've got to understand, though, y'all, is we've got to stop giving people power. And I'm not saying that you just start going on ego trips. Because you're supposed to honor everyone. We're going to hit that tomorrow. You honor your parents, you honor people, you respect everybody. Even when they don't think they deserve respect. How many sixth graders we got? How many eighth graders we got? Eighth graders, ever get annoyed by the sixth graders? Don't answer. It's okay. I know your answer. Eighth graders, you need to still respect and honor the sixth graders. And sixth graders, you need to still respect and honor the seventh and eighth graders. It's a mutual thing. It shouldn't be three grades, it should be one group. Look at me. So not three grades, but one group. It should be one big, awesome family. But you've got to be thinking about that. You can't start seeing people as annoying. You've got to see them as your brothers and sisters. you got to see them as not people who you're going to get the power to annoy you. Look at me, eighth graders. This is more for you. You can't look at the sister and say, man, they annoy me. Because guess what? You're giving them the power to annoy you. You enabled them and empowered them above you now to give the power to annoy you. Okay? They don't deserve that power. Bottom line is no one deserves that power. No one deserves the power to dictate how you feel. Because if you have Jesus Christ in your heart, you really don't need to have a bad day. You have good days and you have great days. But you shouldn't have bad days. Okay? So in closing, I want you to think about this. Our thoughts have power. Okay? 
God is everywhere, always. Say that with me. God is everywhere, everywhere always. Our prayers must be shaped around God's will, not our will. Say that with me. Our prayers must be shaped around God's will, not our will. And the last one, what we think we can become. Say that. What we think we can become. What we think we can become. So I want you to bow your heads and close with a word of prayer. But I want you to think on this thought. Think on what you want God to do with you in your life. Think on what you want God to do with you in your life. And I want you to think about what God wants for you. God doesn't want you to be unhappy. God doesn't want you to be miserable. God doesn't want you to wake up in the morning depressed or to go to bed upset. God doesn't want those things for you. So I want you to be thinking about, I'm going to spend 15 seconds, 30 seconds in silence, I'll close. I just want you to be thinking, God, what do you want from me? God, what plans do you have for me? God, I'm still wrestling with this baggage I told you about last night. God, do you hear me? Just spend 20 seconds in silence talking to God. Lord, I thank you that your scriptures give us amazing guidelines, God, on just how to feel, how to live. God, I always, my prayer, Lord, that throughout this day, God, when we start to dwell on this thing, God, that we need to be meditating and just thinking on things, God, that we know are true. God, if we're not sure they're true, Lord, we don't need to waste our time with them. God, we just need to be able to look around, especially at this beautiful camp, and just see that you're everywhere, always. God, help us to shape our prayers around what your will is for our life, God. Not what we want, but God, what you want. And God, as my earnest prayer, Lord, that we would really believe that what we think we can become. And God, let us think about becoming deeply in love with who you are. Having a relationship with you, God. And living a life that shows who you are in us. So God, it's my prayer today that we would think on and on about becoming more and more in love with you. And we ask this in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Amen.